there is really nothing in the bulletin today uh, that I need to bring to your attention that you can't find for yourself um, in there. There are no particular announcements. But I do wish to take this opportunity, however, to wish a very blessed, a very good, and a very holy day for the fathers. Happy Father's Day. And we pray for you. And we ask Almighty God to cover you with his blessings so that you represent him knowing that you represent him, that you will act accordingly. And in so like, in such a uh, similar manner, uh, I ask you to pray for us, that we too, in our own way being fathers, uh, may reflect to you and to all who look upon us that reflection which is Christ. This is what we must uh, uh, demonstrate to all, especially our families, our wives, our children. We should show our children what a father is supposed to be. We should demonstrate to our children what a father is supposed to be. And in every good way, and in every good work, in every perfect work, let us always look to Christ our Lord and see what kind of man he was and how he stood in the presence uh, of those who viewed him. And when he spoke this morning of the shepherd who went out to get the lost sheep, the one sheep that was lost, that he did give to that sheep the attention that that sheep needed and that he didn't punish it because it was lost and he didn't grumble and growl because of the inconvenience that he was uh, put through in order, put to in order to go find the sheep that he, in fact, went after the sheep, and when he found it, he was indeed a happy. And he gave the sheep the best uh, attention that he could. He rather rewarded the sheep rather than punish it. So does God with us, who would reward us rather than punish us, simply and only because we will go to him in time of stress and strain and sin and sorrow and simply go on our knees and say to him, I'm sorry. That's all that he requires of us. He does not require even inconvenience that is involved in the saying of I'm sorry. He does require sincerity of heart. He does require honesty and genuineness of religion. He does require of us a love, a love for him. And he does require of us that we are anxious to reflect him to all who look upon us. Today, just as the image of mother has been com almost, com well, I can almost say completely uh, annihilated and tarnished and rubbed over with all of the ugly tar and pitch that uh, uh, can be dug up today, so has the image of Father. Who is Father today? And what is Father today? And what control does he have over his children? I do not mean a therapy control over his children. I do mean an honest control over his children, kind and firm at the same time. Our blessed Lord was kind. He was very kind to, this, to the lost sheep, wasn't he? At the same time, though, look at his firmness when uh, what he taught came into question. And look at his sternness when he was speaking to the Pharisees. He was not afraid of them. They were the important ones. He was the nobody. But yet, from his, from his post of nobodiness, did he speak with firmness to the Pharisees and tell them precisely what the matter was about. So we too must do that. And we must give an example. We must show our family, 
our families uh, the way to God. We would show our families the way of prayer. We should show our children that we can get on our knees, that we can offer praise to God, that we're not so macho to use the word and term which today is prevalent, that we're not so macho that we cannot get on our knees, that we do not think it is effeminate to get on our knees and to pray to God. This is who we are. This is what we are. And sometimes, uh, with our children being uh, perhaps separated from us, because of condition of things today in our holy religion, let us not try to convert our children, our friends, families, and relatives, and so on, let us not try to convert them by way of argument. Argument has never, ever won over any converts. Oh, it might have persuaded people on a temporary basis, but argument has to do with the mind. It has nothing to do with the heart. But the way we can probably come closest to attracting the goodwill of our families is example. Let us show them by our actions what it means to love God, what it means to serve God. And that when they look upon us, our friends and neighbors and families and children, when they look upon us, that they really, in fact, can see in us the real image, the true image, the genuine image, the honest image. This is what we must show those who look upon us. We must not try to be extraordinary. We must not try to be um, super in our religious practice. Let us be normal. Our Lord was normal. Our Lord was perfectly normal. He was so normal that, the, as you all know, he was so absolutely and completely and totally normal that those who looked upon him, all they could ask about him was, by way of identification, was he not the carpenter's son? That's all they could ask about him. Or that he came from Nazareth. Then they said, well, can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know. Our Lord was totally normal. And yet he was God. And he was showing us in his vesture. And he had the human vesture upon him. He was teaching us how we too must be normal in our observance but that our normal observance is pure and holy and constant and consistent. Not ups and downs, high today and low tomorrow, full of prayer today and nothing tomorrow, you know, but all the way through a consistency which never varied, which was never disturbed by the occasions of the day. It was always the same. In Latin, it is said, semper idem, always the same. This is what we must be in front of our children and families, always the same. And for those who look upon us will know what always the same is. And they will look upon me, they will always find in me a constant, consistent love of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My beloved Fathers, I pray for you, we pray for you today, and we ask you for your prayers. Now, if you will kneel, I think since Friday of this past week was a, was a feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, um, I would like for you to kneel, and on the front side of your bulletin, you will find the act of consecration of the human race to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, if we can all recite it together.
And in so doing, let us think seriously about what we are saying, that Almighty God will hear our prayer and will hear our consecration and will hear our effort and our desire. Most sweet Jesus, Redeemer of the human race, look down upon us humbly prostrate before thy altar. We are thine and thine we wish to be, but to be more surely united with thee, behold, each one of us freely consecrates himself today to thy most sacred heart. Many indeed have never known thee. Many too, despising thy precepts, have rejected thee. Have mercy on them all, most merciful Jesus, and draw them to thy sacred heart. Be thou king, O Lord, not only of the faithful who have never forsaken thee, but also of the prodigal children who have abandoned thee. Grant that they may quickly return to their father's house, lest they die of wretchedness and hunger. Be thou king of those who are deceived by erroneous opinions, or whom discord keeps aloof and call them back to the harbor of truth in unity of faith, so that soon there may be but one flock and one shepherd. Be thou king of all those who are still involved in the darkness of idolatry or of Islamism, and refuse not to draw them all into the light and kingdom of God. Turn thine eyes of mercy toward the children of that race once thy chosen people. Of old they call down upon themselves the blood of the Savior. May it now descend upon them a labor of redemption and of life. Grant, O Lord, to thy church assurance of freedom and immunity from harm. Give peace in order to all nations, and may the earth resound from pole to pole with one cry. Praise to the divine heart that wrought our salvation. To it be glory and honor forever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.